Hey Space Cats, it's me Jules, and today I'm looking at one of my favourite pens, the Dip Pen. It's another video on drawing, planning and publishing, so if this is your bag, make sure you ding that bell, and I will deliver videos that will help you reach your goal. I write and illustrate children's books, and back in the day when I was at uni, I met someone who showed me how to use a dip pen. I mean, I didn't even think that was really a thing. I thought it was all very Dickensian and something people only used back for writing and stuff. I didn't realise we still use them for drawing. Turns out, we do. Shall we take a look? First of all, let's have a look at nibs. They come in all sorts of sizes and shapes but the common factor is that they all have this split down the middle and if you press on it then you'll see that that split comes apart and there's also a hole at the top of the split not that bit but this bit here that's at the top of that split. When you dip your pen, the ink collects in the back of the nib in here and ready to flow down that groove when you put the pen to paper. So that's one of them. The one that I'm currently using is this one. It's got quite a nice well in the back there. And as you can see, it's quite inky because I've used it quite a bit. Um, but other ones I've got, this is a brand new one. I haven't used it yet. And these ones that look really old, so that one does not have that little well bit in the back, but it does have a little knobbly bit right in the front that collects a bit of ink to run down there. And I've used this quite a few times, but it's quite blunt at the end. It's not very, not very defined point, unlike this one, the one that I'm currently using, that's got quite a sharp end to it. And these ones, um, I'm not quite sure where I got these from, but I think these are making, these are map making ones. It's got a very different, um, end to it where that, that fits inside the pen holder so I haven't actually used these yet because my my holder doesn't fit these the pen holder itself is also really important the one that I use the most this one is the one that I've had since my uni days and you can probably see there's quite a build-up of ink around the edge here it was blue when I first bought it and completely smooth and now it's got these knobbly kind of gnarly bits where all the inks dried. I do also have this newer one which I haven't yet used yet but they all have a piece inside that holds the nib in place and when you're looking at buying one just hold it and make sure it feels comfortable as you'd normally hold a pencil or pen. How does it feel to you? That's why I think it's really important to buy these in person rather than order one off the internet. Go to an art shop and see if, uh, if you can find some that you can hold in your hand and feel what it feels like. The sort of ink you use will depend on what you're using it for. I tend to use this ink which is non-clogging, pigmented, waterproof calligraphy ink. It's waterproof when it's dried because I do my black outlines and then I use watercolour when this outline is dried. I use watercolour to colour it. However, you can get watercolour um, ink that is not waterproof and that it might be useful for you if you want sort of softer edges uh, no harsh outlines so you could use a brush with 
uh, with that sort of paint after ink, sorry, after it has dried to just to soften those edges a little bit. It's really just a sort of trial and error and having some fun. You can also get different sorts of ink like I've got here. I've just got uh, acrylic um, artists ink. Uh, it, again, it's water resistant, waterproof, but it's just blue. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let me grab one of my nibs. This is how you put the, end, the nib into the pen holder. You want to slide it down inside one of those little holder bits like that okay let's try the blue so this is just on kitchen paper but this is just a regular sort of blue uh, watercolour waterproof ink sorry and look I've splatted myself already great and then the black is what you'd expect it's black oops and then the other one I've got here actually what I'll do with this one is I'm just going to splat it onto the paper to show you what it looks like. This is pearlescent, so it's kind of sparkly. Pearlescent liquid acrylic. This one's pink, but I've also got green and blue. And then you can see that it picks up the light really nicely. You probably want to use paper that is as smooth as possible. And I'm gonna run through four here. This one is cartridge paper, it's 130 grams and I'm just going to use my black ink because I've done a bit of testing and some papers are too porous and it just spreads everywhere. So this is cartridge paper. And you might be able to see there it has spread a little bit but it's not it's not too bad and that's this sort of paper is fine if you're just doing uh, it pen work without the watercolor the next up is something that you might have just knocking around if, without having to go out especially and buy anything this is copier paper but it's the premium copier paper so it's very white and it's very smooth and this one's 120 grams Let's see what this one looks like. A little bit of uh, spreading, but the less ink you've got in the nib, the less likely it is to spread. And the next one is, uh, it's an Orem and Robinson fine pen board. And this one is incredibly old, so it's a little bit mottled. I haven't used it for such a long time. And I just had some knocking around in my supplies. And you can see it's, it is quite thick. It didn't have the measurement on it, but it is like a piece of mounting board almost. But this is good because it doesn't, it, it's, this is what it's made for, this board. It doesn't spread the ink around. But as, a pre, as in previous, the, the previous two, you can't use watercolour on this because it's not porous. The last one I'm going to use is hot pressed watercolour paper. This one is £140 in weight 
and it's super smooth and this is the one that I'm going to be using this week for making um, a new course I'm doing on how to draw a mermaid and it's also the one that I'm using for my next book which is also about a mermaid but also it's about uh, a vampire bat and the, the reason why I'll be using this is because for a start as you can see it doesn't it doesn't spread and also I will be able to once this is dried I'll be able to use watercolor with it so I'm that this one's really good and if you get um, the, an even thicker version then that would probably be even better you will also need a pot of warm water which to give your nib a quick rinse in every now and then so that it doesn't build up inside your nib and some kitchen paper so that you can dry your nib or just blot it if you need to next how to hold your pen well really there's no right or wrong way other than making sure that you've got your nib the right way up so that's the back of it you don't want to hold it that way up you want to hold it so that the ink is flowing downwards like that and then just hold hold your uh, pen holder however is most comfortable for you some people say you've got to hold it at a 45 degree angle like this so you'd be you'd be drawing like that but other people more like you'd hold a pen but that to me is quite comfortable in that sort of 45 degree angle some people use a dropper from the uh, ink bottle to there to get the ink into your well at the back of your nib but um, I just tend to dunk my pen in like this remember it's called a dip pen for a reason dip dip so dip it in let it fill up and then tap the side so that any excess comes off and then you're good to go do remember that using a dip pen is not an exact science they do tend to splat and splot and splodge in places that you didn't really intend it to go so if splatting is something that is going to trigger you and make you fed up and frustrated then maybe using a dip pen isn't for you perhaps you'd be better off using a fine liner it's just one of those things really it's a trade-off uh, between having an exciting dynamic line and the possibility of things going wrong in quotes and having a big splat you choose just wanted to show you a few ink dippers that have inspired me this is my old chum Simon James he who inspired me to use a dip pen to start with and one of my favorite of his books is called the wild woods and this is it I love the way he draws the great outdoors it's so bold and exciting to look at this is Plimbridge Woods where as students he and I used to go and explore the waterfall and the nature of the woods another artist who I have great respect for is Quentin Blake what a combination he and Roald Dahl were but he has written and illustrated many hundreds of others and these are just a few of the ones that I've got in my studio. I've also got, I think I counted up once, I've got something like 36 of his books in my house. Here I think is my favourite, this is called Cockatoos and one of the reasons why I like this, apart from the fact that the illustrations are beautiful, funny, quirky eccentric another reason why I love this book when my children were little I used to read it to them and put on the voice 
of this character, Professor Dupont. Every morning he said the same thing. The day came when the cockatoos thought they would go mad if they had to listen to the same words once again. And here he is saying the words to them. Professor Dupont threw his arms wide. He said, good morning, my fine feathered friends. And there they are, all in his conservatory. And then last, but by no means least, is my friend Zoe Sadler. I absolutely love the way she draws. It's really dynamic and free-spirited and really very unique. She um, is a good friend of mine and I will link her website in the description below. This one is about chasing a butterfly and she eventually catches it but because it's so sad the butterfly she feels she needs to let it go it joins up with all of the other butterfly friends i just think it's beautiful and this is this sort of effect of watercolor up here where it's wet in wet um is something that i use a lot as well and i, I love that i think it's brings a lot of character to a picture. If that has whetted your creative whistle, then make sure that you have a look at some of my other video series, particularly the one on making a picture book. And you might like to see the courses that I've made over on my website or visit my Patreon. I'll leave the links below. Next week, we'll be looking at where to start with your marketing if you've just written your first book. I'm off to pump up my paddling pool. I'll see you next time. Nanu nanu.